Hello everyone, here we are on set of Coffee with Kim, preparing for an incredible season seven. Join us, you're not gonna believe who's stopping by for coffee. And I've got the joy deep down in my heart. I'm waking up with your love from the start. I'm chasing the rainbow through the rain. I know it's gonna Big dreams. As believers, can we truly live our dreams and also live godly? I hear this question a lot. Can you work in what is perceived as a worldly occupation and remain true to the values you believe are appropriate for the daughter of the king? Even if it's in a place where such values are maybe belittled, ignored, maybe sometimes literally cast aside. Imagine now that you can, and you choose to go for it alone. Hello everyone, and welcome back to Coffee, Conversations of Friends of Faith to Encourage and Equip. I'm Kim Crable, your host. Today, we're going to hear from a remarkable young woman whose ups and downs in the film industry gave her a heart to make sure others see a way and don't have to go at it alone. Through her company, Personal Powerhouse, and the online membership group, The Powerhouse Sisterhood, she and other Christian actors mentor young women in the film industry to stand up for themselves in an industry that makes it easy to lose your soul on the way to success. When we return from a short break, we will meet Venus Monique. She is a self-described Jesus-loving Texan, one of the lead detectives in the hit crime series, Vindication, and someone who is shining the light of Christ in the film industry. Among other things, I can't wait to ask her what she means when she compares God to a GPS. We'll be right back. Burdens to Blessings with Kim Crable is a program that challenges women to discover the confidence and courage to stop hiding and show their true self to God and others. Because when you are real with God and each other about the hurts and regrets you carry, you will be showered with opportunities to help other hurting people change their burdens into blessings. For me, it's been a place where you can just go and feel um, welcome, feel safe, um, feel like you can tell the group anything and nobody's going to judge, nobody's going to laugh, um, people are going to nod and say, I've been there, I've you know, been through the same things. Um, you just feel like you're not alone. It's an opportunity to understand that you're not alone, you're not unique going through life unhappy or sad or hurt or you know, we're all, we're all in it together. We're all going through something. And it's an opportunity to open that, open that door into the room you closed 15 years ago and peek into it and express how it's affecting you and what it feels like in a very safe, loving environment. And I think everyone can benefit from just a pure human perspective to say, what is it that we struggle with as humans, not as Buddhists, not as Catholics, not as Christians, not as, you know, Baptists, but as humans. We're all in different parts of our journey and different struggles, but that um, we do experience a lot of the same things and that can bring us together instead of walking in judgment of each other. Hello everyone and welcome back to Coffee. Well, as I promised, we have her here. Vina was Hi. I'm so glad you're here. I'm happy to be here. You Thank know, you. we are kind of new friends. Yes. We met through, uh, well, I feel like I know you because of the, the show, Vindication. Oh yeah. Oh my goodness. Mm -hmm. I love that show. And then we mm -hmm. met through other means, but yeah. um, Thank you for stopping by. Oh, you're and welcome. You're, you are, like I said, a remarkable young woman, and you have lots of things to share, so we're going to get right into that. But before we go that way, I want to ask you about Chris Tanner. Yes. You know, I love Vindication. Mm -hmm. If you haven't seen it, you have to watch it. 
But now that I get to know you mm -hmm. and I see that character, are there some similarities? Yes, I I would say that there are. She is um she's a lot of tough love and she's a lot of uh gentleness at the same time mm -hmm. and she's also a little bit rough, tomboyish, and I've got that in me. I grew up with brothers, so mm -hmm. I've got that. But there's just there's just a lot. She's not afraid to stand up for herself, but she also is tender-hearted in areas, so yeah, I, I love that character. I just love her. She's a little sassy and a little yes. bossy and a mm -hmm. little compassionate. Mm -hmm. And I think that just brings out, really, I think we all have a little bit of that in us. Mm -hmm. And for me, it's just letting God control all of that. That's true. Right? That's just true. letting him have his way. Mm -hmm. Well, you have quite a story about how you got into the film industry. Mm -hmm. So how did that begin? Um, I actually did not want to do acting. I... I knew it was not in my future because I tried it in high school and I was like, okay, nope, done with really? that. Really? Yeah. And then when I was walking um, on my college campus one day out of the total blue, it was like God downloaded a thought into my head that said, I want to do acting. Why am I not doing acting? And then the other part of my brain was like, no, 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 no. Remember, you hate acting. I don't know what you're thinking. So I was like, okay, that was clearly God because I did not um, see acting in my future. And so after that, I was like, Okay, uh, I guess if I'm really going to do acting, I see what happens to these, uh, you know, actors, celebrities when they get too far in and they don't have a foundation and they just get sucked in by temptation. And so I went home that day and I wrote in red ink a little list of things I would not do. I would not compromise my line that I would not cross. And so, you know, I laid those out and I was like, all right, and let's go. <laughs> and so you began to say, now you talk about kind of going at it alone. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? I, I mean, I had nobody. I didn't have a mentor. I didn't have help. I didn't grow up in film. I didn't have any anyone in my family in the film industry. I mean, it was just like God told me to do it, so I had to figure out a way. Mm -hmm. And so I went to Austin, Texas, because I was like, all right, I need an acting coach, an acting agent. I didn't know anyone. Mm -hmm. So I eventually found Craigslist and got started on Craigslist. And then meeting people led to the next thing and the next thing. And so it was just a real, um, it was just a time of kind of teaching myself how to navigate the industry. Mm -hmm. Well, tell me what you did. I mean, there had to be moments where you felt great discouragement. Oh, gosh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, oh, yeah. I hear that's like the toughest occupation around and mm -hmm. lots of no's. And mm -hmm. lots of, so as a believer, how did you, how, how was your faith strong at that time? Yes. Yes. Yeah. And thankfully, my mother has got strong faith. So I have a lot of my faith from her. But uh, discouraging, yes. And not because of the rejection, because I know that you're not going to get every gig you auditioned for. Right. But there are some times where you're like, Lord, feels like nothing is happening. Is this really what you called me to? Mm -hmm. But I knew that he did because of that time on campus. And then also, I don't know when uh, there's a dream I'd like to. Please. Okay. Yes. Um, well, there's a dream and an instance. But shortly after he told me that on campus, I went, I was with my mom back home mm -hmm. and we went to this church in my hometown that I'd never gone to, even though it had always been there. And I feel so bad, um, for the pastor. Cause I'm like, you know, pastor can, if you're watching, I'm sorry. Um, so I, for whatever reason, I was just so grateful. I think I had just found my purpose. I knew what God wanted me to do. And I just was so excited to bring, you know, glory to him through the acting. And so the pastor came up to me and I'm bawling and he's telling me all this stuff that God is telling him. And I'm like, okay, you don't know me. You see me crying. You're you're trying to like comfort me and tell me the stuff, but you know, God's not really speaking to you. So he's telling me all these things. And my mom's sitting there with me. She's hearing it. And eventually he kind of paused and he looked down and he goes, Okay. He told me to tell you that you will bring fame to his name. And I was like, Oh my gosh, you really were hearing from God all this time. I'm so sorry. So then I'm like, what else did he say? I don't know. But my mom and I all we remembered was you will bring fame to his name. And so I just was like, Oh Lord, like, thank you. It, you he just confirmed what he downloaded into me. So wow. yeah. that is so powerful. And here's the thing, uh, Venus, that I think that I, one of the things I pull out of your story is, well, one is that when God is leading you mm -hmm. and you are walking his will it's not always easy no. isn't it and, and so many times we think well this god's called me to it he's going to open doors and this is going to be just glorious and fabulous and is that 
I think that's what causes people to question so much. Yeah. So you have to know that you know that you know. Yes. So for someone who's struggling out there, and, and I've heard you say a couple of times, you heard from God, God spoke to you. What, how can people know when it's time to give up and when it's time to keep going? Yeah. Is there, is there an answer to that? Take it to God. 100% take it to him because he has it all laid out for you and he's got the path laid out. And I haven't talked about the dream yet, but he, because there have been times where I'm like, Lord, I feel like I should do this, but I'm not sure. Yes. And so I would kind of pursue that. And then he would answer in that pursuit. He would answer. And I'm like, oh, thank you, Lord, for making that clear. Mm -hmm. And there, you know, sometimes I'd have to remind myself he is not a God of confusion. Right. And there was another moment in my life where that just hit me. He is not a God of confusion. And it was when I was torn with two different paths mm -hmm. and feeling like I knew what God said, but then also the other part of me knowing what is logical, what I should be doing as a responsible adult and, you know, the worldly normal thing. Right. I'm like, Lord, I feel like you called me to something else. Mm -hmm. And so in that pursuit, he would speak. Mm -hmm. So always, always take that to God. Yeah. Also, and you probably had friends, and you, you talked about your mom that you would talk to, but just being able, knowing the Word, mm -hmm. and getting in the Word, and, and having faith and trust. Mm -hmm. So what about the dream? The dream. Um, so I actually just shared this for the first time on an interview the other day. I had, I was staying with my mom again, and I had this weird dream that I thought, I was just going to throw it away. Mm -hmm. And I thought, I'll just tell her about it, because it was so weird. And what it was, was that I was pushing my office chair up this aisle. It was kind of like a V and I was going up the right side of the V and there was, I was trying to push my chair and there was a huge white refrigerator there. I couldn't get around it. I just couldn't do the thing. And so I, somehow I was told, I guess, to come back to the bottom of that aisle, go up this aisle. And there were some Mexican men that were, and I, and I think they were Mexican because it, my, I'm, I'm half Mexican. And so my, it reminded me of my dad and my grandpa and they were just making a way for me. They were demolishing things, tearing down things and um, making that path for me. And I just had to wait. And then I finally went through the path. And at the end of that aisle, there was a door that was like a, a slatted door, just kind of halfway. I, it was a swinging door mm -hmm. and they told me to wait here. And so I'm waiting at this door, not knowing what's happening on the other side, no clue. But I'm just sitting there because I was told to wait. And eventually they came back, which felt like forever. They came back and they let me in. And when I went in, it was just buffets of food. And I was just, and then all my acting friends that were there. And I just started crying because I was so grateful at what they had done. And so my mom was like, honey, it sounds like you are trying so hard to push your business in this direction. And God is saying, come up this way. I'm preparing something for you. You just need to wait. And when the time is right, he'll open that door and the, you know, the opportunities will be there and what you need. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm too much. <laughs> so I've clung to that dream since then. Whenever I feel like, Lord, things aren't happening or am I in the right position? And, and I remember I just need to wait and he'll open that door. Waiting is the hardest thing, it's so hard. isn't it? How hard is waiting? It's like, give me something to do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But there's, there's such a surrender in waiting. Yes. Yes. To, to be still and, and know that it's God and, yes. and to put it in his hands. I, to me, it's like, oh, God, give me give me anything to do. Just please don't tell me to wait. Yeah. Uh, and that's really hard. But it really does bring you to that point of surrendering what you yes. want for his will. Yes. Huge, huge. Okay, so GPS. Let's talk about that. <laughs> yeah. And this isn't my own idea. I got it from somewhere. But as I use my GPS during the day, I'm like, this is so much like God because it, we get the next directive and we do that thing. And it's not like, okay, you're going to turn here. You're going to go to this Avenue and then you're going to turn, you're going to do this roundabout. You, you don't get all of that because you'll be overwhelmed. And I just feel like that is so much like God. I'm telling you the next thing, trust me that the destination is where I've got that for you. Just trust me with each step. And when you finish and complete that step, I can give you another step. And if you choose not to do what I'm telling you to do, or you don't seek me and you do your own thing, don't worry, I will reroute you. It will take longer. It will, you know, be a different route to get there. But um, the destination he has for us, it's just we have to listen to each step and be obedient. 
and trust. Think about all the truths in that. I mean, I'm sitting here just racking up biblical principles as you're talking about that. You know, so many times we think if we mess up, mm -hmm. it's over. Oh, mm -hmm. it's like God is going. It's like God is done with me. But you know, or He's going to be angry with me, or He's going to punish me. And it's that graciousness of God that says, "I will reroute you. Yeah. I'm not going to condemn you. I'm not going to, you know, do all these things. I'm not going to say these belittling things to no. you." And isn't that a word to our friends today? I mean, friends, are you hearing this? God is not. He's rerouting, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. and I love that. I love the fact that we He will give us one direction as we obey. Yeah. He gives another direction. Yeah. Um, I love the fact that He gives us a destination, yeah. but He doesn't give us all the uh, all the turns and stop signs mm -hmm. on the way. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's that goes back to what you said before, Venus. Is that talk to God? Yeah. Let Him give you one direction at a time, yeah. one step at a time. And so I think that is, I mean, such a word for all of us today is because in all of that, really what it comes down to is what you're telling us is have that strong connection, that strong relationship with Christ. Yes. That's the bottom line. Mm -hmm. Don't you? Oh, absolutely. And I think even in the film industry, you've got to have that foundation set because this is an industry that will pull you away, that will tempt you with money or fame or you know, whatever. And so you have to have that foundation yes. in Christ yes. before you get into that. You have to know, is this what you want from me? Because things can go south. Yes. Um, so yeah, so important. Absolutely. Uh, Venus, so many times I have young girls who walk up to me and go, oh, Miss Kim, is it okay for me to be a cheerleader? And I'll mm -hmm. go, well, tell me what you're thinking. Well, you know, the skirt's a little short or, you know, is it okay for me to, you know, do these things? And one of the things that I love about your platform is that you are going into what the world perceives as a worldly environment, mm -hmm. but you're going in to be an agent of change, not mm -hmm. to allow it to change yes. you. So for all of those girls out there, for the guys that mm -hmm. are, are about to step into an environment that maybe is not one that um, would be applauded by the Christian community, mm -hmm. it is possible. Mm -hmm to go into those environments and still be you. But what it, what's the secret to that? So I think there's a couple of things. One, you could just do faith-based film and play it safe and do that. And if God's only called you to do faith-based projects, that's great. Um, but if he's called you to do secular and you're concerned about falling into that trap, I think it's okay. And honestly, I, I encourage this to be the person that sets the precedent. Yes. Like, okay, yeah, you guys normally do this and you normally, you know, uh, require this of your actors or your, but you know what? Um, this is me and I'm a human and I have morals and values and I'm going to let you know what those are. Yes. So I'm going to set the precedent. And then if you're not cool with that, I don't need to do your project and maybe we'll work in the future, but now it's not the time. Right. And so I would, you know, just, I just want young people to have a backbone, to be okay with standing up for themselves. Yes. And, you know, for the longest, I didn't really have that. My husband is incredible, and he has got a backbone. He had, he does not try to hurt feelings, but he is okay being forward yes. and saying, no, you're not going to cross that boundary with me. You're not going to take that liberty with me. Yeah. And so I've learned from him mm -hmm. that it's okay to stand up for yourself, yes. and it's okay to do things differently. And then if it's not received well, then you know what, this is probably not something I need to do. Right. And so, yeah, I would just, that's. And that could be in any industry. You know, it could be the cheerleader yeah. in high school. It could be an mm -hmm. occupation. It could be where you're going to school. It could be anywhere. We are not going to always be surrounded. I call it a huddle. Mm -hmm. We're not always mm -hmm. going to be in a holy huddle. Mm -hmm. God caught, left us here to be ambassadors for him, yeah. an ambassador for Christ. I saw this t-shirt the other day. It says, this is, this is not my home. I'm just here recruiting. Oh, I love that. Oh, I've never heard that. I, know. I love that. And I thought that's what we're to be about. Yeah. But we can't recruit if we're just in a holy huddle. Yes. I believe that God does call us out into different environments to mm -hmm. set the standard. Mm -hmm. But one thing that you said that I hope the audience remembers, and you, you had made your plan mm -hmm. before you stepped into it. You mm -hmm. knew your guidelines. You mm -hmm. knew your boundaries. This is what I will not do. Yes. And if you do that in advance, and that's planning, yeah. right? Praying and planning. Um, when you do that, then when those 
opportunities or those challenges mm -hmm. are presented, you have already made it clear mm -hmm. in your mind, this is not where I'm going to go. Right. So that's important. It is, because in the moment, you're like, then you have that war in the moment. Oh gosh, that is a lot of money. Yes. Oh man, but I really want to work with those actors. But if you've already set those things for yourself, then it's like, okay, you're coming at me. I appreciate what you're offering, but I've already decided. I don't not deciding now. I have pre-decided what's okay yes. and what's not. Yes. And I just want to. This is just keeps coming to me, but I just on my way here. Um, do you know T.C. Stallings? Yes, of okay. course. Okay. Yes, yes. Um, so he recently did a live in the Christian casting community. He's also in vindication, but I was listening to that on the drive here. Mm -hmm. So proud of him for setting the precedent because he has been more involved in Hollywood than I have. Mm -hmm. And I was just listening to him and just like applauding TC because he is not afraid to have the backbone and say, hey, here's what doesn't work with me. Yes. And so anyway, if, if your viewers have a chance, go to Christian Casting Community on Facebook and find the interview with TC Stalling. So it's like two hours long. Yeah. There's so much good stuff. Absolutely. I, I had the opportunity to interview him. Oh, and yeah. yes, and I just, I mean, just another powerhouse, just like you. Oh, thank you. Speaking of powerhouse, we're, we're going to take a short break and then we're going to come back and we're, I want to talk about what you're doing. Mm -hmm. um, and maybe you might want to even, if there's something, a piece of advice, you might want to just give to people who are about to go into the to this industry, mm -hmm. you know, just kind of give them a heads up. You are just so much information that I'm trying to squeeze out of here. <laughs> so we'll be right back with more with my friend, Venus. When you sit in a group of men that, are, that have a high level of trust and compassion for one another, amazing things happen in those conversations. I think it's incredibly valuable because strain, burden, stress, hardship are inevitable. You're not going to live a life without that. It happens. Once it happens, the only thing we have after that is how we deal with it. And we have two options. One, bottle it up and never talk about it, or pretend it doesn't exist. Or option two is try to talk about it in a constructive way that helps you grow. And the importance of this for men in a non-judgmental way, to be able to sit and talk in that way about real issues and real problems is life altering. What you realize quickly is that all the group of men that you're sitting there with who at the beginning you don't know are all facing very similar challenges in their faith and in their lives. For many people and many of us, there were things we were carrying for a long time that we didn't even know we were carrying because we had them for so long. And when you finally let them go, it changes the way you see the world. It changes the way that you operate. Is once you find that burden and address, start to address that burden, that's when the healing begins. And for men, Ad addressing that burden privately, let alone publicly, is massively difficult. It's a nonprofit ministry, so like any ministry, it relies on donations. Donations go to books, donations go to hosting events that bring people in. Every event that we have changes someone's life. There are a few things in your life or in the world that you can do that have that impact. And we're here to tell you that it has that impact. So if you're interested in having your life change for the better, if you feel a voice in your head calling you and saying you want something more or you feel like you could do more, I'd encourage you to go to kimcrable.org and check it out. Uh, this is an opportunity for you to not only change your path and your faith journey, but also an opportunity for you to grow your family's journey as well. So join us, Confront and Conquer, at kimcrable.org or on Facebook. We'd love to see you there and connect with you. Hello everyone and welcome back to Coffee. Oh my goodness, this conversation with Venus, I know that you've just enjoyed so much and you've gotten so much practical application of God's Word. Venus, so there are people out there who are going at this, uh, stepping into this workplace of a film industry, and I know that your heart is to not, no one to go at it alone. So what are you doing to make that happen? Um, I have a company called Personal Powerhouse, which is also from God. Mm -hmm. um, what it initially started as isn't what it is currently, but that's okay. Uh, mm -hmm. And what I do right now is mentor young women in the film industry who are pursuing it. 
Mm -hmm. and we have there's mentors we have guest speakers come in and speak to the girls and a lot of it is about the industry but it's also about life we talk about relationships and Mm -hmm. we've done a bible study through there and we talk about budgeting and we I mean it's kind of like an all-encompassing mentor program so it's just an online membership where these girls come in and we have to hang out every week how do we find out about it? Uh, personalpowerhouse.com mm-hmm. uh, slash sisterhood waitlist. Mm-hmm. So that's where you can kind of read more about it, get on the wait list if you know if you fit. So it's for 18 to 29 year olds, okay. which is interesting because every time I post about it, I have women say, oh, this is something I would love to do. Can I join? And I'm like, no, but maybe God will create something in the future for women because it's, it's just a great community. You know what I love about that, and I, and I so one of my underlying themes in everything that I do that I think is such a strong biblical principle is that everything that we've gone through, once given to God, painful, hurtful, mm-hmm. He wants to bring something up like a voice of hope, mm-hmm. and that's what you've done. You took what was very um, a, a, a lonesome type of trail for you in this industry as you were going at it alone, mm-hmm. but you've turned it into something that you can help others. Yeah. That must be so gratifying. It's exciting. And it's, it's awesome to see that these girls care about their future enough yes. to come every week and be mentored by the other women because we're all Christian actors who are the mentors. Yes. Um, and so it's just really, the girls in there are just amazing. Well, and sometimes they have to be taught how to care. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes you like that you that you really do have a voice, mm-hmm. that you really can do this mm-hmm. and live out your godly mm-hmm. uh, life that that God would have you to do. Mm-hmm. Well, I just want you to know I reached out to a couple of your students. Oh, and uh, I want you to know that what you're doing really does matter, and people don't feel alone because of what you've done. Do you know Brooklyn Whit- Whitmer? Yes, I do. So she says Venus is so active in her faith and and talent. And which plays into how she loves on all of those around her. She is never afraid to challenge and encourage all of us to be bold in our faith. Oh, that's, that's pretty sweet. powerful. And then Rebecca Peterson. Yes. Rebecca Peterson says, Venus is one of the most genuine people that I know. She is passionate about truth and equipping others with the tools they need to succeed. I am so thankful for her investment in my life. Oh, I love that stuff. Pretty awesome, isn't it? I think it's just amazing when we when we pour out to Mm -hmm. know that really is hitting on that ground Mm -hmm. um, that people are absorbing it Mm -hmm. and, and. it, it really is making a difference in their in their faith yes. and what they do. Yes. Well, I just can't even thank you enough for being here. Our time always flies, and I knew that this conversation was going to give us so much hope. So thank mm-hmm. you, friends, so much for coming. Um, you know, audience, friends, how about you? Don't, don't you just love the determination that Venus has for all of these women as, as they get together? You know, the Bible tells us that iron sharpens iron and that's what we're supposed to do even in really hard tough environments that we can we can do that for one another and venus i love that you've created the powerhouse sister sisterhood and what's what that's doing and i have to say i love what you said about the gps i think that's amazing <laughs> i'm going to be remembering that every time it says reroute because i get lost a lot um that we know exactly god knows exactly where we're going and he knows exactly how to get us there so friends i just want to thank you again for joining us right here for coffee i know this has been a very uh very encouraging conversation and i look forward to seeing you right here next time on coffee all right. Bye, everybody. See you next time.